Hey guys, Footy Manager TV here. Welcome to episode number 35 of my Manchester United Football Manager 2015 Let's Play. And here I'm going to cover training a little bit. Uh, people have requested this because I've just been really playing games uh, mostly and people want to see the training and sometimes people think I don't use training, but I do. I just don't yeah, show it in the episodes because it'll make the videos longer because I want to get those two games in. But uh, yeah, I felt I'll show training and a couple other stuff. So if there's something you want me to show in future episodes, drop in the comments comments and I'll see what I can do but here uh, you can see I do have a little bit of variation in training this really proves I do change it every so often so we've been working on yeah last 53 weeks this is what the summary is over the last 53 weeks 30% on the fitness 9% on tactical 11% on ball control 13% on defending 26% on attacking and 9% on team cohesion which I usually do during the preseason, but sometimes I do it if I notice the team is not yeah, playing as a team, really. We're not playing too well. Sometimes I may change it up like that. So I do make some variations like that. Um, only seven of our players are happy with training, so that's something I may look into. What, yeah, maybe leave your suggestions uh, how to make them the most happy with training, but usually it's hard because you want them to work hard in training, um, but if you work them too hard, they get unhappy. So it's hard to find a good balance and also... This is something you should take a look into when selecting your starting 11 for an upcoming game. Which players have been performing well in training? Look at this, Rowan Pressland. I'm not sure this is in order of who's playing, or yeah, who's training the best, or is it just the top four, basically? They're all doing well, not Pressland is doing better than Romero or Amtiti or Tielemans. They're just all doing well because they've just got that straight up on the training, as you can see. But Rowan Pressland, it's not really too surprising. He's, uh, he's got... That high potential we brought through, like the highest potential youth player from our last intake, world-class central defender potential. Just absolutely insane. He's already a decent player for Skybet Championship. So I'm playing like I'm playing him in some games, like whether it be a cup game off the bench or something like that, because he looks decent already. He's got that determination up to 18 now because he was tooted through uh, Phil Jones, so I think I did that well. Yeah, so you get his determination up to 18. So like I said, definitely can see him as a future captain. And that's why I want to play long in this save. Like people say, just a big team, it may get boring. Some people may say that, but I still notice a lot of people enjoy this. So I will keep it going because I'm sure you'd want to see, leave in your comments, would you want to see this guy at his best when he's the captain of the club and even other regions coming through? That's something I really, really like. But at the same time, yeah, you have to still be enjoying it and not think it's boring or it's a waste of time for me, really. And for me to enjoy it as well. But you you guys are uh, as important as I am, really. Because uh, you are what really generates the views in the channel. And yeah, it allows me to do this every single day. So I want to do what you do, enjoy at the same time. But at the same time as well, uh, different people enjoy different things. So it's hard to get a good balance. But anyway, uh, there's Lucas Romero. You can see his training. Samuel Amtiti. Uh, yeah, like I said, uh, again, it would have been a controversial choice uh, to trade him with Nanny, basically, and of course had a bit of money with that. If you go to history, it says, yeah, 14 million plus player exchange. Yeah, you probably think it's a bit much, but he's been performing well and he's developing. So like five seasons from now, you're probably going to forget about that deal. And Nanny, he's probably going to be 33, 32, whatever he's going to be. And he's going to be past it and not really a world-class player or a top division player anymore. Or well, at least that's going to make an impact. And then there's Yuri Tielemans. Uh, you can see he's coming along nicely. So this is the first part of the training. The next part of the training is the coaches. Uh, so you want to know what my yeah, coaches are like. Because I remember someone asking, do I have five stars on everything? And I think someone replied to him like with, um, yeah, he, of course, yeah, he would have that. Like maybe insinuating that like I'm cheating. Like I'll cheat just to put all five stars. I'm not even sure you can do that. But <laughs> like, yeah, that's what it is currently. Maybe leave some suggestions how I could change the training up. Uh, we got bought, yeah, we got someone on everything. Maybe another goalkeeping coach so I can change it up. I haven't got me on anything basically because my training is crap. <laughs> like my best is defense coaching, uh, which is 11. So I feel, and yeah, that's something I've noticed as well. I've learned the mental attributes and coaching attributes do increase by themselves. So you don't even have to go on a course. Like my defense coaching is up to 11. I'm pretty sure it wasn't that when I started this. So they, they do develop one of my, yeah, one of these that are 12, it used to be 11. It must've been, I think level of discipline or something, but it's gone up to 12. So they do develop by themselves. So you don't have to go on a coaching course. So anyway, 
uh, that is it, and we'll go into the next game. Who do we have? Yeah, we've got Swansea and AC Milan in this episode. So, yeah, and there are only three games between, and AC Milan's going to be huge, so I may yeah, rest a couple players. So here we are for the next game. You can see Chelsea actually drew against Southampton. They've been drawing a few games. You can see drawn three games, dropping some points there. So, uh, yeah, we're going pretty well so far, and other teams are kind of dropping points. So it's good we're in a solid position, but we've got to make sure we win against Swansea. They're kind of bad form right now, sitting in 17th. Man City got a game a bit later as well, and they are 6th. Against Newcastle as well. Like, you can't just forget about what teams they are. It's just Man City, Newcastle, but... Newcastle is second. Newcastle want to continue doing well. So they're in a good position early. They're actually the only undefeated team in the league. So we're going to have to push on here. And oh yeah, but as you know, only three days away from the AC Milan game in the Champions League, you can see it's a home game. So we have to manage our squad a little bit. Uh, as you'll be able to see from that, we've got heaps of injuries, so I can do as much as I can. Uh, who knows? Falcao, maybe uh, he's probably just going to need some reserve games. So probably not. I've dropped out Burnout because he's 93% uh, condition. I brought in Luke Shaw. He needs match fitness as well, coming back from that injury. And he's getting back in training, doing well. So you're going to see that a lot from him. I'm not sure whether I should train Luke Shaw as that left midfielder because right now he could use that, actually. Like, you've got Di Maria, but we don't have much to rotate. You've got Depay. He's pushing up to a complete forward striker position because all the injuries we have. So, uh, yeah, do you think it's worth training Luke Shaw as a left midfielder so he can uh, come in that position? But I, should, I guess when someone will play there, it will be Burnett more so. He's probably better in that position. So we'll see how it goes anyway. This is the squad. Bring in Axel Witzel. I really want to give him a chance because, of course, he was my signing. The first league game he played poorly, but... To me, if you forget about we signed him and he did poor last year, whatever, he still looks good. Like, doesn't he look good? He looks like 17 passing, good mental attributes. So when he gets going, he can. He will be, he can be a valuable player for the first team squad, but I'm not going to be blinded to it. If he has another poor season, I'm probably going to sell him next season. Like, one poor season for a new signing is okay because, especially coming from a new another country, never playing in England before, you've got to give him time to adapt, and that's happened plenty of times for me. Like, first season, they do bad, and second season, they come in be amazing. So, there's still a real chance for that. We just got to actually give him the chance. So, ooh, Tielemans or Will Hughes. I'm going to keep playing Will Hughes. Because uh, he's on the up and up. You can see his determination going up. Who am I tutoring him by? If I go training. Yeah, from Juan Mata. So, <laughs> uh, not a bad tutor, you reckon. Uh, Juan Mata. Um, what else? Also, yeah, kind of on the Axel Witzel situation. Victor Valdez as well. I don't know why, but people in the comments are acting like he's a crap goalkeeper. Like he's a second division goalkeeper or something. But still, if you go to reports... And from our good judging, Benevin, he is a star player for Premier League sides. And that's why I find it puzzling. People are acting like he's a crap goalkeeper or something. He's still a top division goalkeeper, a top four team goalkeeper, being at Barcelona for that long. If he was crap, Barcelona wouldn't have kept him. They're Barcelona. They could probably sign anyone they want. So Victor Valdez, look at his attributes. Some are going down, but some are still going up as well. So yeah, you've got to give him more chance. He, I think he had one bad game. Uh, but you get that for goalkeepers in Football Manager. So, yeah, it's it's up to him to show that he can be a key goalkeeper because Nicola Liali, with Gian Luigi Buffon potential, in case you missed it in the previous episode, there it is, dubbed the new Buffon. But he's doing bad in training. So, training is crucial. You've got to reward players that are playing well in training and not the players that are playing bad. But on the pitch, he's only conceded one goal in four games in the league. So, he's doing an okay job for a youngish goalkeeper. But still... Uh, I'm, it's still in my mind, if Valdez doesn't perform to a high level, we could be looking out for another goalkeeper. But this is the thing with me, I've never wanted to splash so much cash on a goalkeeper, like 30 million or whatever, for world-class goalkeeper, because they can still make errors in Football Manager. Like, every goalkeeper makes errors, so I don't feel it's worth splashing the cash. That's why I like getting a young guy and maybe a pretty good goalkeeper like Valdez is on a free transfer. I always like doing that, actually. So, that's what I feel the best way to spend the money. So, Swansea, look at their attack. They've got Gomez, Chadley, actually, they signed uh, from Tottenham. Uh, you can see, 4.8 million. Hasn't really performed too well. Doesn't, yeah, he doesn't look like he's a good player in the Premier League so far, judging off last season and this season. But they got Sigurdsson. But if you've got those mixed together, you've got a mix of Sigurdsson, uh, Chadley, and Michu. Like, that's a little good mix. But the center mids are a bit dodgy, I think. You've got Glenn Whelan. 
Yeah, not too sure about him. Not the highest quality Premier League midfielder. And then Bentaleb, another signing, well, on loan at least from Tottenham. He's still, again, not the required quality and probably a reason they're doing badly so far. And they've got Walk Vist, if that's how you say his name. Again, he's a young player they signed. Really hoping he can be a first-team player, but hasn't really performed. He played well on loan, but of course, that's not same quality, not Premier League. Uh, so Linus and Fernandez-Williams, they're decent centre-backs. The defence is okay, but definitely the right-back is a problem, and you think Ankel Di Maria uh, can cause some problems for him. So here, huh? How come the advice is not applied? Benevin. What's your problem? If I go to... I'm pretty sure I have it selected. Responsibilities. Club. First team. I'm pretty sure I selected it. Because... Didn't he in a previous episode? That's weird. Anyway. I'm not sure why that... Maybe because I download the... Have the full version now. You can say it's not beta. Maybe I have to do it again. Not sure. But I can do it here anyway. So... It's not really a huge issue. So we'll move on here. And yeah. It's going to be... It's going to be hard because you've got Rest Koldani and Memphis Depay. It's still quality players. Like You might think yeah, it's going to be hard to score because we're missing all these big strikers, but Rest Koldani been scoring and Depay been scoring. And yeah, Ankel Di Maria been creating. Adnan Yanazai, he's back in the first team now, coming back from injury. He's been scoring goals. Three goals from two starting appearances and one off the bench. So we definitely have the goals in us. We've got the players who can score. So I guess... It's remained to be seen. And also, someone said my motivating... Because we've got 20 motivating for my manager, aggressive team talks would work well. So let's see how we go. I'll say, I expect nothing but a win from this match to keep our good run going. Okay. Victor Valdez gets motivated. I, I'll try and do that a bit more. So yeah, I do listen to you guys just to, just to prove. I know a lot of the time I like to get into the game and stuff, but in some episodes like this one specifically, I want to yeah kind of respond to a couple of people and uh, to showcase. I, I do actually listen to all the comments I get, but sometimes there may be a lot, so I can't do everything every single person says. But yeah, definitely take it on board. Uh, but here, I definitely need to focus on getting the win here. So Axel Witzel, look at that ball. Ah, uh, poor. Yeah, look at it. It's poor. See, I'm um, Titi back in centre back as well. Will Hughes. See, we're still winning, like top of the league, but at the same time, playing, like giving so much playing time to younger players. And look at that Vitzel winning the ball in midfield. Goes to Yanazai. Finds Reskoldani. Oh, I was going to say it's a poor finish, but it was offside, so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Vitzel is looking nervous. Oh, no, Yanazai's injured. We don't have someone to replace. We had to play him as well because Quadrado was out. So what we're going to have to do here is bring on... Can Mata play there? Okay, yeah, he's a bit acceptable there. Like, yeah, he can play there a little bit. Uh, competent. So it's Mata as well. He's a world-class player. So you think um, he'll be able to do the job. But again, Witzel, he's poor. He's not looking too good. But you've got to give him the confidence by playing games. He's been out of the team. So, of course, what do you expect? So I'll go aggressive again. I, I want to see a good performance. So, yeah, just a general reaction, deep in thought. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I mean. You can't expect a player to be happy if you're not playing him and he's been out, yeah, not in the team. And Mata, Hughes, what a sub. <laughs> that's one reason to bring on Mata, just oh, offside. Why? <laughs> I just get so disappointed from offsides, as you know. But who who would be happy about them? Let's see this again. It is offside, but why is he offside? Why does he, he must know he's in an offside position? Uh, that's probably the most frustrating part, especially from a free kick. Just yeah, don't be offside. Okay, Walkvist. Oh, can we just wait? I'll see what happens here, but I definitely want to target that area, especially when you've got Di Maria against him. But yeah, we'll just see what happens. And I'm playing Jimenez. Yeah, I'm playing him at centre back. See, there's so much things. I've got to mention so much stuff. That's what I like about Football Manager. It's so in depth. Even if you don't like Football Manager as much as FIFA, if you subscribe for FIFA or whatever, but like it's so in depth, it actually makes the videos better than I guess career mode because it's so in depth. And Marta almost finishes it, but he couldn't. So yeah, I feel if you're neutral about the game, you should still enjoy it because it makes my videos better personally. I feel anyway. So what we'll do here, we'll go to instructions and we'll exploit the left flank because, yeah, uh, Di Maria down the left, their right back is poor. So we'll exploit that and we'll see if it makes an impact and we'll see if it notes because, yeah, 
uh, Welkovich is only 18 year old and he's not really amazing so against Di Maria Di Maria should kill him you would imagine but at the minute not too much is happening <laughs> it's looking to go in half time nil nil at least when coming with a team talk will go assertively I'm far from pleased yeah motivating firing up players come on that's what we have to do let's go But that's what you get, I guess, when you need to rotate your teams and you've got, yeah, you have so many games. Like, you've got Champions League three days away. We have to be wary of that, rest some key players, and some key players are even injured, so it's hard. But we need to find a way to score here, so probably going to push more attacking as I usually do. Just push the wingers up, make deep line playmaker support. Probably take Witzel off. And we'll bring on Tielemans. Which striker has played poor? Oh, Reskoldani hasn't had a good game at all. Uh, let's just think here for a second. I could bring on Bernat though. Giovinco. Oh, what do I make the choice? <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, this is where it's either Bernat for Luke Shaw, maybe a more attacking fullback, or Giovinco for Reskoldani. Hmm, Giovinco. He's probably not the best advance forward. If I go to attacking roles, advance forward, attack. Hmm. Yeah, balance is only seven. The rest of attributes not bad, but for me, he's more of the creative type. So clear that. But yeah, it's a huge decision because Burnout is that big money signing we made. Nah, yeah, I have to bring on Burnout because then we can change his role, put him as a wing back, and he's actually natural there as well. So, yeah, these are decisions you have to make as a manager. It's huge. So, then we'll make those complete winbacks, as I usually do. Complete winback, attack. And, yeah, I'm actually... I know I took a, kind of a while off doing a lot of uploads, you know, and I was uploading, like, four episodes a day or something. I want to get back to that now after a little break of that because just, yeah, transitioning back into making FIFA videos and you should see that get going once again. So, yeah, hopefully you understand that as well. Uh, one Bernat's... You have ability to make a real difference. Come on. And that's it. Because, of course, Yan as I got injured before. So, yeah, we'll push for the win. Come on. And even a team talk as well. Go aggressively. And we'll say... Ooh, show some passion. Come on. You got players motivated. Ooh, there's 20 minutes. What can we do in 20 minutes here? Gomez is off. We have a corner. It's Mata. It's Di Maria. Oh. It's a good save for Tremel. She'll have to beat Tremel. Tremel. Oh, Jimenez. It was a good chance, but a poor shot. Oh, 10 minutes. I'm not sure what more I can do, really. Uh, play, uh, yeah, team instruction-wise, what can you really do? Um, more direct passing, go a bit more direct, just, I'm not really sure, maybe play a higher tempo as well, what's be more expressive, allow more creative players with freedom, yeah, a bit more flair, we'll do that, look for the overlap from the wing backs, so do that, just change something up, and maybe we'll go passionately and say, push forward, come on. Try and change something here. Oh, come on. Looks like nothing's going to happen. That's disappointing. Ten minutes and no highlight. Just this pointless one at the end. Hmm. At least we avoid defeat. Oh, it's away from home, I guess. Sigurds... Wait. They have two of the same name almost. What the hell? <laughs> Who's that? Oh, my God. Anyway, we'll say assertively, no, aggressively, actually. You weren't good enough. Got to motivate them for the next game, I suppose, AC Milan. That's why it's more concerning match, that one. Unlucky not to win it, though. 57% possession, and then 5 on target, 12 shots on target. Oh, yeah, 12 yeah, twelve shots in total and 5 on target. Two click-up chances. Uh, hard press not to score and win this game. 
So here we are for the Champions League game against AC Milan at home. It's a huge occasion, definitely. We've been going okay so far, but they have won their first game. So this is crucial for us to win this, because we could take their position and be in a real good position then. So who's this Calabria they got? A uh, young defender. Yeah, he's 18. I'm not sure if a report doesn't really... Nah, doesn't have high potential. So if he's playing, if they have injuries of sorts, it could be good for us. Where are they? Do they have injuries? We'll go view their players. And... Oh, yeah, they've got Abate injured. Zicardo is... Uh, yeah, Zicardo is unregistered. So I think... Yeah, he'll be playing. Even, yeah, the Shilio. So they've got some injuries. Uh, Montalivo in midfield. Uh, Menez... Uh, Ezekiel Henty, he's just, again, someone not really good, just a pacey youngster with not much... They've got a lot of unregistered players, that's what I'm noticing. But anyway, that looking at that, it should give us a real good chance. So we'll go back, and I don't think Inzaghi is that good of... Is he that good of a manager? He seems okay, nothing amazing. But anyway, we'll go back, 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 and back. So it's a real good opportunity to continue. Uh, yeah, we've, we've had good form. That's without a doubt. We've been unbeaten for quite a while now. So we just need to continue that form. But we definitely do need to win. And uh, we've made a lot of changes to the first team from the previous game. Uh, Falcao's come onto the bench because he's still coming back from injury. He's expected to be out for a day from strained knee ligaments. So that's probably not an injury you want to bring him back early from. But whenever I need someone to play in a position and they're just on that orange injury and they can actually be selected, and especially if they're a world-class player, that'll make a huge difference. We've got to play him. And even Yanazai, only 82 condition, but we don't have anyone to play in his position naturally. Like, he'll gonna have to, he's going to have to be subbed. And then we might make that rotation. Maybe you put Di Maria there. You bring on Memphis to pay something, but Yanazai has to start, and he wants first team football at the same time. And both our free transfer signings up front are going to be playing together once again: Rescaldani and Giovinco. So we'll see how they go together uh, for this game. So as I said, it's a crucial game to win. Look at their first team. They've got Al Sharari. I don't reckon he's amazing as a lone striker. I don't think he'll be good enough. He def if he plays strike, he'll probably need someone to support, but better as a winger. But they got Verdi as well, Simone Verdi. He seems like another good young player, but he's 23 now. He does, again, he doesn't look overly amazing. Probably won't do too much, but saying that, he'll probably score. Uh, Sapanara, he's decent. He's got pace, uh, good dribbling ability. But again, he's naturally as a center attacking mid. We'll see how he goes. They got Pereira, Gago, Nigel De Jong, and the the defense is decent. Apart like their centre backs are good, Rummy and Alex. But then there's Antonelli. He's getting a bit older, or that's someone. No, yeah, he's 28, but he's okay. Okay, I'll give it to him. He's an okay player, and he's got a great average rating in the Serie A actually. But there's Calabria that guy I was talking about. He's especially mentally, and yeah, he's tackling attributes, defensive attributes aren't amazing, but mentally really poor. So again, we should probably take yeah uh, take advantage of that kind of thing. So I might add that to the instructions if you're not scoring or whatever, like I did. Got those instructions applied, and yeah, I might actually do that from the start. Yeah, exploit the left flank. Obviously, Di Maria down the left again uh, should be impact, and even one Burnett as a really attacking fullback. He could do, yeah, we could do some damage down that side. And again, we'll try aggressively and see if that works. So, yeah, the two times I've did it um, in this game, it hasn't got amazing reactions. It's got a good reaction for Valdez. That's about it. But, yeah, um, I guess we'll see going forward. Come on, Di Maria. We need an early goal. This will be a great chance here. Rojo finds Di Maria. Di Maria. Di Maria finds Yanazai. Ooh. Here we go, maybe. Ooh, but that was a good, patient build-up. This is what I like to see. Stones. Mata. Giovinco. Ooh, come on. It's a good chance, though. It's a good chance. It's a good way to start the game with a few chances. Bernat puts it in. Yanazai gets on it. Back to Raphael, who's been solid as a right fullback for the duration of this career. He whips it in. Ah, come on. Yanazai's not going to win headers. Oh, Romero, that was a good tackle. Now, Raphael, tackling's good. Set it up, Yanazai. Finish it, Di Maria. Yes. This is what we want to see. Finally, Di Maria scores his first goal of the season and hopefully can kick on and continue like last season. Because if you remember last season, he didn't fire right away. In the second half of the season is when he was amazing. So hopefully he can continue on 
and score some more goals. And But, yeah, his creative force last season, he was the architect, was amazing. So we need a lot more of that. Uh, uh, Rojo, just a talking to for him there, no yellow card. We should be looking to hold on, go into halftime, talk, just say, don't get complacent. That'll be a nice team talk to go in uh, with. So we'll say aggressively. Oh, no, you can't do that. It just... See, aggressive, it says it's... Generally, it's more of a negative tone. So someone said, uh, yeah, someone said I should do it because I've got higher motivating, but it's generally a, neg yeah, a negative tone because it's only... Yeah, I'm not happy with the performance. So I'll go assertively and say guard against complacency. And only, yeah, Burnett is looking stressed. So I'll just say calmly to him and say, you weren't that bad, but I believe you can improve. I have faith in you. See, with that, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to say because he's nervous. But yeah, a lot of the players got good reactions as well. It's kind of what you expect from that kind of team talk. But we definitely do need to win this. We need to hold on or score another whatever. We need the three points. We need to finish first in the group. Romero. Because I know I probably don't have the squad to win the Champions League right now. We've got a lot of young players coming through. But when you're in it, you want to try and win it. So, and we can beat a lot of teams. So, I'm going to give myself every chance. Go, Di Maria. Finish this. Oh, <laughs> Di Maria, what was that? Are you serious? Rami's in pain. So, again, they've got a center back. And he's off the ground. Look at that. Come on, Rescal Dani. Take advantage. Calabria, is that a red? Oh, it's going to be red. He said he went in late. That's going to be red for the youngster. It has to be. He's gone. Oh, who are they going to bring on, though? Zapata? See, that was that led to that because Rami was off the pitch. And, of course, we probably won't score here. You basically never score from a free kick after it's a red. But, yeah, I'll take that. It just gives me more chance to win this game. Um, as you can see there, Rescaldani was offside. So, with that... I'll go back to my instructions and take off, explode, yeah, um, exploit the left flank because we don't really need to do that anymore. That poor guy is not on anymore. Well, I don't want to say he's poor. Uh, he's, he's a young defender. And he doesn't even have potential to be like a star player though. So it's interesting that they're playing. I guess he's their only option. They've got a lot of missing players and unregistered players. But yeah, with that, I'd love another goal. Who knows? Goal difference could be important. You don't really know with these kind of things. So, 30 minutes remaining. We're going to make changes to still look to score. Not positional tra changes, not like more attacking or whatever, but just better players, I guess. Uh, we will bring on Memphis Depay. Uh, we'll switch up his position with Di Maria, because Di Maria can play on the right. Uh, we'll take Gia, or no, not Giovinco, Rescaldani. He's low rating and low condition. We'll bring on Falcao for some match fitness. He's on Super Morale as well, uh, all suited. Uh, and also one Mata. Has just had an average game, that 6.9 rating and 75 conditions. So we shall bring on Yuri Tielemans. This guy's going to be insane in the future. He's an amazing player. Now Memphis Depay, assertive. I have faith in you. Falcao, assertive. Actually, no, calmly. We'll say, show me what you got tonight. And Yuri Tielemans, assertive and no pressure. So, yeah, he looks relaxed. Decent reactions from those. And we'll look to go on. I still, yeah, like I said, I really want to score another goal. But everyone's looking nervous for some reason. We have an extra man. They should be confident. Come on, we have to go with the team talk. We'll go passionately. Encourage. Will that change that up? I'm not sure. Victor Valdez is motivated. I guess we're going to find out now, aren't we? Are they playing with the right back? Is Zapata playing right back? Yeah, he's not a bad player, but probably more natural as a centre back. Romero again intercepting Al Sharari. Like I said, not really good at that lone striking position uh, for mine. Depay! Oh, I thought that could have been one of those crosses that just go in. It was dangerous <laughs> like to attempt a cross from there. Diego Lopez goes long. Al Sharari, no chance. He's going to stand no chance. It, hoofing, yeah, hoofing these long balls forward to, and Rojo and Stones against him. Like. He's not going to have any chance to win it in the air. No chance at all. Tielemans. Giovinco. Oh. Sebastian. You should have finished that. 
But Burnett whips it in as Falcao. Oh, two really good chances there. It was great play by Juan Burnett getting forward um, as he does. I really like him. He's going to be a great player for me in the future, especially. Like, this is his first season, of course. He'll uh, slowly be introduced to the squad. Oh, Rafael. Rafael's being class. Look at this. Go, Giovinco. Why is that guy there? A. Hey. Giovinco. Giovinco. Oh, that was wasted. But it wins a corner, so not too bad at the end of the day. Rafael. Okay, nothing's going to happen. I guess we just need to hold on now. Okay, the oh no, they've got a corner. I was just oh, you see, I paused. I was about to go control. Oh, and as soon as they did that, they scored. Honda. I've been working on defending set pieces in training as well. Ah, oh, come on, Valdez, what are you doing? Looks like I'm gonna have to go that attacking way now. Come on. This had to be a win, surely. Support. Gonna have to go that way again. Gonna go more direct. And... Yeah, much higher tempo, actually. Just try and go as attacking we can. Um, Be more expressive as well. Maybe close down much more. Just apply pressure on them or something. Uh, shoot on sight. Just, yeah, when you have a chance, take it. Come on. Let's go. There's less than 10 minutes remaining. Oh, come on. Nothing. No highlights. Passionate. Push forward. Please. Uh, it's going to be a pointless highlight again. I told you I needed that goal, but we couldn't get it. It's going to be over. This like home game uh, has to be a win. And especially with all the players they were missing. So yeah, this is going to go down as a disappointment, actually. I made some changes, but it just didn't, it didn't happen for me. Especially after them getting a red card. We didn't take initiative. We should have. We should have scored. Again, I'll say assertively, you were not good enough. Mode gear, get good reactions, but good reactions is not going to get you points. And now, usually by this time, you've got to be kind of assuring yourself as going to get into the group stages, but we're not. CSKA Moscow are in with a shot. And also, this time of the year is when I search for players that's going to be running out of their contract. Of course, I'm not going to be able to offer them a contract right now. You've got to wait till uh, the start of January or the last day of December, technically. And one of those guys, I just want to, yeah, declare interest around this time. That's what I do to make them want to leave, kind of, and maybe not listen to a new contract. And that is Samir Handanovic. I think he's two years younger uh, than Victor Valdez. Uh, so leave your thoughts. Again, this is what I meant. I'd rather sign these keepers who are quality on a free transfer than you spend money trying to get a cheap, high-potential guy for the future. So, yeah, leave your thoughts on Handanovic. I'm getting a scout report on him right now. Do you think I should sign him? Free transfer. What does it say in his information? Uh, he wants to impress me in the next performance. So, yeah, do you think he would be better than Valdez? You look at him like that. He's got 18 reflexes, some good mental strength, jumping reach as well. So he's going to be better in the air than Valdez. He's 193 centimeters. That's the downside of Valdez. He's only 183. He's a pretty small key. But, again, same point. He's got high attributes. 17 reflexes, 17 communications, 16 one-on-ones, and good mentals as well, composed. Concentration, really important. But he's conceded some goals as well, so... Yeah, leave your thoughts. And his value is only going down as well. So if we're going to sign Handanovic, but then Handanovic wouldn't join till the end of the season anyway. So, or yeah, the start of next season. But it's an interesting, yeah, it's an interesting one. We'll give uh, Valdez a chance, definitely, because he is experience. Experience is going to tell. I thought it would in Champions League, but, but it's more so we didn't take advantage of our chances more than anything. Uh, the good thing is we have some pretty simple games up next. Like the next three is Burnley, Cardiff and Wigan. So yeah, they should really be wins and hopefully good form going to the away game in the Champions League group stage game against AC Milan. So definitely again, it's I'm going to try and win it, but I guess we'll see how it goes. Hopefully enjoy this episode and I'll see you guys next time.